What's going on guys? Jeff from Mad Hatter's Reef and today we got a little bit different of a video for you. Uh, I wanted to share with you guys what I've been up against and the tank has been going through some struggles as of late and they've compounded yesterday right at maybe two hours after I found a solve, partial solve anyways, for the problem that I've been dealing with. Now this video is going to be about the downside of tank automation and if you were to walk by my tank right now you really wouldn't even see anything wrong with it at all. There is a little a bit of red slime right there in between the aquascape and outside of that the tank looks how it normally does and that really is due to the fact that I've been ripping and pulling cords and hooking up new surge protectors and really just limping along to kind of get through this. Now I want this video not really to be any type of um, argument against automation but what I want it to be is a word of caution buying into one system and one system only. And really, that is where the bulk of this problem has stemmed from for me. The fish are doing great. Corals are doing good. Um, the tank's stable. There's nothing really wrong with that. But what I have been up against as of late is the energy bar on my Apex a couple of the high demand outlets basically tripped on it. I believe it was the one of the ones that had controlled the heater, one of the ones that was controlling the lighting, and there might have been another one, but I can't think of it off the top of my head. I was in there making some adjustments to the dose when there was something weird about it, but I didn't really give it much thought, and it took me a couple times to upload. I have been dealing with connectivity issues with the Apex, um, but that really isn't on the Apex. That has a lot to do with my Wi-Fi, and that's something that's going to be addressed pretty soon. I do have the new Wi-Fi, but I just haven't um, been able to hook it up due to how much I am creating content in one form or another. I lost a couple outlets. It was fine. I adapted. I moved some stuff over to the eCoral controller as well as a backup surge protector and have been kind of moseying along. Fortunately enough, um, with all my Ecotech products I've been kind of slowly migrating to, you have the ability to control them in EcoSmart Live, but they also have the ability to be operated independently. So if I didn't have my MP40s and my Radeon lights, and my Vectra, I'd be in really, really bad shape right now. Also, the eCoral has helped me out quite a bit during this time. It's been a couple weeks that I've been kind of carrying, carrying along with this. And yesterday, I actually figured out. So, I don't know, it might have been a year ago, two years ago, I did a video on the Neptune Systems Wave pumps. And I had the starter kit. The starter kit comes with the one link. And that one link gives you the ability to not use plugs on your energy bar and plug in multiple waves into that one link. Now the problem with the waves is that they don't have your typical plug. They actually have a weird four prong plug. And when I lost power to my energy bar eight, I lost power to the waves. So the energy bar eight went missing in Neptune systems, I'm sorry, in Apex Fusion, um, as well as the energy bar. And I thought there might've been some type of connectivity issue or some update that had happened that I wasn't aware of that really caused those problems, but it, that wasn't really the problem. I think there was some type of surge that hit the energy bar and those outlets that had a very high demand due to the flicker it, those outlets died. I still had power to my skimmer, still had pi power to my bio pellets and a couple of other uh, pieces of equipment, but I wasn't able to control them anymore. I, was, I wasn't able to turn them off and on via Apex Fusion. So ultimately they were running, but I had to unplug them to do service to the protein skimmer or the bio pellets or what have you. So yesterday, I started talking about this already, but yesterday I came up with the idea of hooking up my wave pumps because I had this red slime starting to build up in this area right here. You can kind of see that dark shade right there, as well as a couple of spots in the aquarium due to the lack of flow in the aquarium because all I had was the two MP40s going. I had a spare pump kick around that I threw in there as well, but 
it still wasn't enough flow. wasn't anywhere near as much flow as what I had when I had the two MP40s and the three wave pumps in there. I do have a tremendous amount of flow in my tank, and that's why I have this bare spot right here that just never fills in. doesn't matter how much sand I put in there. So I took the one link, which in that old video, I really didn't feel like I had a need for it, wasn't necessary. I could just hook up my waves to the energy bar eight and I was good. Well, with the one link, you're actually able to hook up up to three waves to that and use one power brick. And I, it kind of escaped me. I tried doing it, I think immediately, but I didn't hook up the one link to the base unit of the apex and it wasn't able to connect. Yesterday, I brought the one link out again, looked through it. I got power to two out of the three waves. I think one of the waves shorted during that whatever happened initially with the first um, power outage. I don't know what I don't know what caused it. It's a lot of assumptions at this point. But I got two of the waves back, so that dramatically increased the flow in the tank very quickly. Two out of three ain't bad. So yesterday another storm came through. And the power flickered. I have um, a very, I live very close to a hospital and I almost never ever lose power. At the very most, probably five minutes, I've lost power and it kicks back on. Uh, that doesn't mean that I shouldn't have a solve for some type of power outage because I do live in Maine and we do have rough weather up here, snowstorms, ice storms. Uh, it isn't without question that I could possibly lose power for a period of time. Ultimately, what I need for that is a generator to make sure that the tank is gonna be okay. So the power flickered, and as soon as it flickered, stuff tried to come back on, and then my uh, Tunzi Osmolator ATO started screaming. So the water in my sump started to fill up past the Tunzi Osmolator, which it has an alarm that will let you know that the water the water level in that return section of the sump is gone over. It's that uh, the mechanical float switch, not the eye. And I'm looking at the tank and just watching it not come back on, even though the power had came back on. Which also, my tank has been tested multiple times to basically make sure that in the event of a power outage that I'm good. And the reason I do that is because I have an overflow box. And ultimately... Um, overflow boxes and return pumps and aquariums they don't they have a bad rap because they don't typically work well there's safeguards that you can put in place to make sure that if there is a power outage that your tank when it the power comes back on you don't just have your return pump kick on and then overflow your tank i have figured that out a long time ago. I don't know if I've done a video on that, and that's probably another video that I should do. Uh, but so many people are moving away from overflow boxes that I don't really know how useful that would be. But anyways, kind of getting off course uh, with this talk. So automation. Automation is an amazing thing. It can make your aquarium bulletproof to an extent. What I have found out over the last couple of weeks, and I have a couple different of automation systems, on this tank i have the neptune systems apex i have the e-coral and i also have eco smart live so those three three things together um, can pretty much make your tank bulletproof and really has helped me um, kind of limp through the last couple of weeks because i have those things in place the problem that i have found in this event is that buying into one system completely can cause you a tremendous amount of problems. Where I had the Neptune Systems waves, and if I only had the Neptune Systems wave, which a period of time that would have been the case, I would have zero flow in my tank outside of the return pump that is bringing the water from the sump back into the display tank. If this, whatever has happened with the energy bar would have taken place two years ago before I kind of slowly started saving up and buying the MP40s and putting those in my tank, I would probably uh, be in a bad way right now. I probably would have had to gone to uh, the local fish store or the closest fish store that I could find and just putting whatever I could find that's going to move the water in the tank and to kind of keep it going. So where I'm at right now is I'm basically ripping wires. And let me kind of reset here. So excuse the mess. Uh, one cord 
control is not my strong suit. Two, I've been ripping wires, uh, pulling plugs, and kind of rewiring stuff for the time being. But right here, for those of you guys that don't know, this is the energy bar eight of the Neptune Systems Apex. So this right here is the base unit. Now, wires connect from the base unit to the energy bar. That's how you get your control. And then you name your plugs based on what piece of equipment that you have in there. And right now that uh, Neptune Systems logo is blinking rapidly because it's not connected to the base unit. There's still power going to the energy bar, but it is not supplying power to any of the outlets at this time because that second storm that came through yesterday, not even two hours after I took the one link and got my power heads back, I lost complete power to the NG bar eight. So down here, hanging, which is not how I left it, but hanging, that's the, the one link. Um, that was my Vectra controller, which I have moved over to my e coral. So, because I need to have my return pump, because that would uh, mean that my tank is not getting any type of heating. But ultimately, um, right now, what I'm doing is I'm taking an old fashioned surge protector, plugging in the most essential pieces of equipment um, into the e coral, and then whatever kind of the backup stuff or the power heads that don't need to be hooked up to the e coral because you don't get as many plugs with the e-coral as you do with the Neptune system, Systems Energy Bar. Um, stuff that needs to be controlled is getting hit, put into the e-coral and anything that can kind of control itself, like my heaters. My heaters have their own controlling. Uh, one of them is going to be hooked up to the e-coral in, in the event of an emergency. The other one's going to be operating on its own. Right now I'm pulling cords out of here, thinking at this point in time that I may replace the Energy Bar 8. I'm not 100% sure, um, but I do have a little bit of control with the Apex still and using the one link. So I'm able to use my power heads. I'm, use, I'm able to monitor the tank. I'm able to dose the tank still and everything else basically is going to be run on something else at this time. I've had the apex i think for about two years but for right now the apex is going to um, continue i probably will take out the energy bar eight and move the one link i'll attach that up here where i got that empty spot and kind of limp along with that for now but really what i wanted to do with in this video was give you guys a word of caution with automation and how important it is to automate your tank because it's going to dramatically increase your ability to be successful in this hobby but not buy into one system completely because if i had nothing but neptune systems products hooked up to my tank and i lost my energy bar i would be in a tremendous amount of trouble I know that we talk about redundancy in this hobby and really what I should have had in place uh, for an event like this is a backup energy bar eight. So I could just take that one out and put the new one in and go about my business like nothing even happened. Uh, but I don't really have 200 plus dollars, 300, I don't even know what a base unit costs. I think it might be in the ballpark of $250 uh, kicking around to have something that's just sitting on a shelf. But that's kind of the game that we play. You know, this is an expensive hobby. And if everything in my tank were to die because I didn't have the ability to just throw another energy bar on there and go about my business, I would lose everything in my tank. And that would be way more costly than it would be as if I just had spent the $200 and had that kicking around. All right. So I wanted to give you guys a little bit of an update of what is going on today. I know that this isn't the typical mad headers reef video that we got going on today but ultimately um i wanted to get a video out to you guys and kind of talk through uh, some of the struggles that i'm going through with the 220 gallon right now i have been able to kind of limp my way through this because i have spread out the different types of equipment that i have on my tank if i would have been 100 percent apex I would probably be in a world of hurt if I didn't have any type of backup equipment. You need to make sure that the things that you're buying for your tank are able to operate independently as well as within a system. And the perfect example of that is what Ecotech Marine has done. Their equipment operates independently, but it also operates 
within a system. That's not the case with the wave pumps for Neptune systems. And the reason I understand why they did what they did with the plugs, because it saves you space, it saves you other things, and then you have the one link option, which is tremendously helpful and has helped me kind of recover a little bit from this. But ultimately, buying into one system uh, can be pretty devastating, especially if you're not prepared for the worst thing to happen. So I, I want to thank you guys for joining me. This has kind of been a long rambling video. Um, make sure you hit that subscribe button if you're new to the channel. Make sure you hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. If you ever have dealt with anything like this before uh, with automation kind of failing you, let me know in the comment section down below. I want to hear you guys' thoughts about automation. Uh, redundancy and those types of things because I think that's something that people can benefit from in the long run. I want to thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time right here with a brand new video.